That's a compliment coming from Broken Matt Hardy. Yes! Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo, and ooh, we have another packed show for you today. I swear, Hasbro, I love you, but you gotta quit going right up until noon Friday. You know, for the sake of my recording schedule. Yeah, but no, we're downright spoiled, aren't we? I mean, <laughs> there's just, if you can't find something over here, you can find something over there. There's just so much to go after. True to their word, as soon as I finished editing the last Foosh Weekly, Boss Fight Studios gave us a little look at the next figure in their 112th scale Popeye line, and he's big, good looking, and he's large. Like Popeye himself last week, Bluto is a paint master. So there's gonna be some scuffs, some dings, some scrapes, but that won't be the case with the final factory piece. That's common at this stage. I mean, they moved around for pictures, it's gonna scrape the paint. And I say that he's big, but we haven't actually seen any kind of scale comparison side by side. I figure they're gonna show all four figures and then hit us with a, you know, this is this, and this is this, and this and this. I'm just hoping that, you know... He's large! If they stick to the schedule, and they have so far, today they should be showing either olive oil or castor oil. So prepare to swing back around next week. Wonder Festival was held this week, and there were some interesting things to look at. Something that stood out at me was the Voltron that Blitzway teased last week. Here we get a better look at scale comparing to their 6-inch and 12-inch Waldo. You see Waldo? Can you find him? He's, he's right there. From that, we can guess that Voltron is about, I don't know, 12, 15, 16, 18 inches, somewhere in there. He's gonna be, he's large. Apparently it does split into the lion modes, but looking at the Gestalt itself, it's hard to tell that, you know? It, it forms just kind of seamlessly together with some articulation, but he, options. Ooh. No release info or hard facts yet. I, I think the teaser for last week said next month. We'll learn more. So next month. We recently saw tiny pictures of the upcoming Jada Toys Universal Monsters line and they looked a bit iffy. But now that we have full-on solicitation, mm, I'm pleasantly surprised because it seemed those initial pictures didn't have all the articulation cut in and stuff. And now we get a bigger, closer look and it seems to be more, well, at least closer to final product. The looks themselves are a bit animated, almost like style sheet, like what they would use in or magazine ads or comic books or movie posters. It's not like NECA where they're going for a distinct movie accurate look. This is kind of more, I'm gonna say it again, generic, but not in a bad way. The best example at the moment is Frankenstein's monster because the NECA one is so fresh on our brains. We've seen reviews, it's hitting right now. So it, yeah, we're comparing, this does look softer. But again, I think that's the point. That's not me making excuses either. This is just a different style, a different size for a different kind of collector. We can kind of see the same thing with Dracula because we've had a lot of suit bodies, super articulated, Marvel Legends, other lines, to compare to, and when we compare them, Dracula comes off a little plain. The clothing doesn't have a lot of wrinkle sculpt. It has some wrinkles to it, but then on the front of the legs, it's just flat, but that matches the Frankenstein. Bride of Frankenstein intrigues me, not because they decided to shoot a figure with a bright, bright white, white dress on a bright, bright white, white background, but because of what may be under that dress. And I don't mean it like that. Get your mind out of the gutter. I am full on action figure mode. I wonder if they sculpted the full wrapped body underneath or if it's just plain and if it, the articulation, how it's gonna move. Because some of the pictures do show that she's kinda in a action pose. But the breakout star I think is gonna be Creature from the Black Lagoon. Not because of the character itself, but this is the best glimpse we get at engineering and thought process behind this action figure line. First, check out the paint apps. There is more than a few colors here, but they're all the right colors. They're nicely layered, the contrast, they're placed in all the right spots. I'm way better than I expected from a company that I don't usually associate with six inch action figures. And that just accentuates the fairly detailed sculpt. But best of all, the articulation integration. Double elbows and knees, ball mid torso and maybe waist, hinge and swivel wrist, shoulders, hips, even hinge and forward facing pins for rocker ankle. All of that on top of an alternate left flipper that can actually trigger finger the spear gun. And it makes me think that somebody within the design team at Jada 
knows what they're doing when it comes to articulated action figures. But after you soak the creature in, you go back and look at the other figures and you notice things like Frankenstein ha also has rocker ankles, some nice head tilt, which <laughs> you know me, that's my favorite. Dracula in the package has a swerve at the waist where he kind of kicked over, so it makes me think there's at least a ball joint somewhere in the torso. Bride has some nice paints and washes to the wraps on her arms and feet. I again, making me think, does that carry on. So I'm liking what I'm seeing. That only leaves QC and issues that may happen at the factory. And then, you know, we get the final product and it's loose or something. But judging by what I have in front of me at the moment, I'm going to have to give this line a test drive. $25 a piece scheduled for September. Links are in the description. Speaking of Universal Monsters, Randy made his comeback to the NECA Twitter account and he updated the profile picture to this. Unlike Jada, NECA is going for more screen accuracy, packed with way more detail and it's 7 inch scale. So, options. <laughs> yeah! That only leaves the question, does Wolfman have nards? Alongside that was a tease for some accessories from Gremlins 2. I don't know if this is a figure pack or throw-in add-ons accessory pack to itself. I don't know. It's just a tease. So I guess we'll find out soon. In a future, Foosh Weekly. Recently, Todd treated us to a nice promotional picture of the upcoming Batman 66 line. And it shows that it has limited articulation compared to the DC Multiverse figures. And if the leaks are true, it's going to be 6 inch instead of the usual 7 inch. Along with the figures come a Batmobile and then the Batcave, both look awesome. Then at Wonder Festival, McFarlane had at least a couple of detolfs, a, a couple of displays, which is weird. I don't know if they've ever shown at Wonder Festival before, but either way, along with those three figures also showed an unmasked Robin and a masked Joker, which I'm going to guess is some kind of exclusive variant something. You have to get it somewhere else. Not that we've seen solicitations for the main figures, but you know what I mean. It, that thought process. Then later this week, this picture was posted of Todd with the Batman 66 stuff, just looking like a kid in a candy store. Just look at that face. That is pure plastic joy right there. So yeah, we can talk about the figures looking basic or not in scale with the rest of the DC multiverse stuff, the flat capes, the kind of off details, but that's just some of us, you know? Others are excited about this line. Me, I'm down for that Batcave set. It's going to be some silly fun pictures with, even if I don't get the rest of the figures, I need that as a backdrop somewhere. That's not all from McFarlane this week, though, even though these aren't big reveals. We had seen these, were they leaked in Previews Magazine? Now Amazon has solicitations. Here's a better look at the DC Multiverse Dark Knight Returns Armored Batman, and I, <laughs> oh, I hate saying this because, oh, bigger, prettier pictures always make me like it a little bit more. And that's what happened here. You see all the details in the sculpt. There's pits and stuff in the armor, giving it kind of a history. You start thinking, well, how long's that armor been laying around? Kind of McFarlane fod. Mm, it's not bad. But there's some changes going on because this shows black armor, gray undersuit, whereas the previews leak showed kind of a blue armor, yellow belt. Variant exclusive, again, McFarlane, you never know. The Todd designed Wonder Woman also hit Amazon and seeing these bigger pictures, bigger details, it helped tie it all together in my brain. Still not my mind's eye vision of Diana, but I'm seeing a lot of people say, oh, this could be Lady Sif in the Asgardian shelf or add to that shelf too. So there's options here, even if you don't like her as a Wonder Woman. When you zoom in on the pictures, it looks like the open midsection on the abs probably should have been painted flesh tone. The same with the split in the back, but it's not a deal breaker. I do expect somebody to custom paint that though. That'd be neat to see. Both are $20 due out in September, and I think... Today is the start of another Todd spree where he's showing new stuff. So again, <laughs> in the future. Metacom, are you okay? You're acting weird. Come here, let me check your forehead. If you keep up with the Foosh Weekly, you know that recently Metacom updated their Mofex Avengers in-game Iron Man Mark 85 with uh, extra goodies, like a couple of unmasked heads, nano gauntlet options, and they threw it in there without upping the price. I mean, that's kind of amazing. It got me off the fence, made me order it. Now, in another surprise move, they're updating one of their Mafex Harley Quinn figures. The original solicitation pictures for the Birds of Prey overalls version of Harley had some face paint or face print that was kind of smudgy, kind of thick, kind of heavy. You know what I mean? The likeness is there, but 
it wasn't great. Then a couple of months later, they solicited their caution tape Harley Quinn, and that face print, much better much closer to her actual likeness. This week, Metacom posted pictures and stated that they are going back to the overalls version and updating the print there, making it so much better. Now, all I have are these small pictures, so it may be kind of blurry, but you can see a difference. It's definitely an upgrade. Unlike Iron Man, though, they didn't change her release date, which isn't until December anyway. So I figure about October, November, we'll get an email saying she's next year. Downside, if she is scaled like the already released Suicide Squad figure, Harley Quinn, uh, Deadshot, Joker, those are bigger. So this may end up being large. So there's a lot of factors at play. All I know is the face looks better. <laughs> That's all I got for you. It's been a while since we've seen anything new from the Jack Pacific Apex Legends line. And this week, we kind of do, technically something new. GameStop posted an exclusive Revenant figure that is the same base sculpt, just with a new paint job. But what a difference the cinematic style makes. I mean, compared to the old one, it's not in day. I love what they did to the head here. Don't get me wrong, I still feel these are kind of plain. The articulation is not what it could be. I mean, there's no ankle rockers. You can put all the articulation in the world above that, but if you don't have ankle rockers, it's gonna come off stiff. But my other big gripe has always been basic paints. Comes with a pistol and a shaving razor packed in a fifth panel box. It's gonna cost $30 and should hit next month. We've been seeing wave one of Mattel's Masters of the Universe, Masterverse Revelation line trickle out. In fact, I'm seeing a lot of reports of Skelegod at Target and I seeing pictures out in the wild it's not as bad as the original promo shots. Still some Mattelisms, but again, not as bad. Except for Skeletor's design in the face and then the size, which I guess you could say about He-Man too. But then you shoot over to Evil Inn and she's very detailed, crisp paints, Mattelisms. But then comparisons to the classics and the Origins lines, it, you realize, oh man, the Masterverse line is big. News-wise, online site The Chosen Prime has put up actual solicitations, giving us a better idea of when they should hit online shops. Skelegod and Battlecat are July, Wave 1 is September. But not only that, they also list Wave 2 as Man-at-Arms, Tila, Beastman, and Spycore. That's interesting because it's kind of the mirror image of Wave 1. In Wave 1, we got two main villains, and then the main hero, and kind of a secondary character to go along with them. Here, we see two main heroes, a main villain, and then a, a backup. And that's not taking anything away from Mossman and Spike, or in fact, I'm probably more excited for them than other characters in this line, but you know what I mean. They aren't as prominent as I remember in the original cartoon, which may change in the new one. Who knows? Wave 2 is scheduled for October. Mezco! <laughs> Earlier in the year, they teased a 112th Collective Fantastic Four, just showing Reed and Sue and Johnny and Ben, not saying if they were singles or sets, if they'd come out in the next year. This week, we got all the answers. It's a Metal 10 set coming all together, and it is magical. Well, weird and magical. Weird because I'm not the biggest Fantastic Four fan, but Veebs, oh, he was blowing up my phone. And he's not even a fan of soft goods or cloth on action figures, and he was all over this set. But then going back and looking at the pictures and his constant excitement got me hyped. <laughs> There's just so much going on here. All kinds of options for each. Mr. Fantastic has swappable stretchy hands and lower legs and arms and torso and neck. I guess if there was another set of well, another crotch and upper legs, you'd have two full figures. They list Herbie as a Mr. Fantastic accessory, but we all know better. This is another character in the set. Especially since they decided to give Herbie all kinds of accessories with the chores and the and the and, and test tubes. Compared to the rest, Invisible Woman it feels kind of bare bones, but even she comes with some kick-ass force field effects with the and then some different head options. Human Torch has an alternate flame on head that looks amazing. He has a smiling face, all kinds of fire effects, and then a flame base that lights up. And then Thing has a disguise kit with hat, glasses, trench coat. He has four swappable heads, 
hand options, a lamp post that bends, and then a, a metal girder that does the same. So we're gonna... Hell, you get this set, you have so many options that you can upgrade other figures with. Give the Marvel Legends version different looks, or you know, add on to this, or stretch that, or flame this. The $420 price tag caught me crooked for a minute, but then I realized that's actually a decent price for everything you're getting here. And yeah, those words are coming out of my mouth. $420 for five figures. Four, technically five. And yeah, I say all that because I ended up pre-ordering. <laughs> well, on top of that, they also teased a Doctor Doom saying he will come soon. And then the original teaser picture from earlier in the year had some kind of Mole Man monster or some kind of enemy to fight. In these new set of solicitation pictures, they updated that with a green cape green hood so doom's coming i want to say that it's a no-brainer that they eventually give us a flamed on johnny or the whole suit or a fully invisible sue but they haven't been doing that a lot lately I, I think oh yeah they're gonna come out with this other version later but or or my personal favorite another whole set in the white and blue costumes but I don't know. I can't chance it. So I pre-ordered this. Sticking with Marvel, Sentinel has been slowly working up to the solicitation for their SV action into the Spider-Verse Spider-Man, and that day has come. I mean, we already knew the whole deal here because of leaked pictures last week, but to secure it, that's even better. There's optional lower torso parts and heads where you can make either the blonde svelte Peter Parker or the brown-haired, slightly pudgy Peter B. Parker. But like I said last week, for a lot of people, this may simply be a kick-ass Spider-Man for the shelf. And judging from people's reactions to the SV Action Miles, this should be more of the same. The sticking point for a lot of people seems to be the big gargoyle head this comes with. You might even say, it's large. Two worries were the space it takes and how much it may jack up the price, and both of those things are true. At seven inches, the base is longer than the figure is tall, and then the overseas price is $140. I say overseas because the rumor is that when this gets released domestically, it won't have the gargoyle base, so it'll be cheaper. GameStop has the exclusive rights to release Miles in the US, and I think it may be the same for Peter, because we're already seeing some domestic online shops post it up, and it's at a higher price. That's because they're having to import it themselves, and then make a profit on top of that. Hopefully we'll hear more about that soon, and this should drop, at least overseas, in September. Jumping from one Spider-Man to another, early in the week Hasbro announced their GameStop exclusive Gamer vs. Miles from the PlayStation game. But not just any Miles, this one's full-on stealth and has the Venom Blast. That's along with fists and thwips and wall crawling hands that should be come those should come with every Spider-Man figure ever. And like I say about all exclusives, if there has to be one, I'd rather it be something like this. A little off the wall, less important to the main line, but a good get for people who do want it. Plus, it's an all new skull, so I'll bet you dollars to donuts that in the future sometime we'll see this painted in all its black and red glory. Then today, because the Marvel Legends guys can't help themselves, we get the Spider Man retro carded Sandman. And I love it. I know there's a lot of people who have their preferences. The original Toy Biz is beautiful. And then the Build a Figure Sandman. It's big and it has some options, but for me, it was too big. This fits more into my Hasbro shelf because this seems to match Hydro Man better. And I've always thought of them as, you know, yin and yang. And here's the sand, here's the water, you make concrete. I don't know where I'm going with this. I kind of wish that the whole punch face was a bit angrier or cockier or something, a little bit more expressive because there's a hand going through his face or a blast of some kind, but I'm probably not going to use that as much as the normal angry head and then the sand limbs. $23 estimated for October. Okay, story time. Thursday, like a lot of people, I got an email saying that there would be some G.I. Joe classified series figures going up on Hasbro Pulse later in the day. But I had already made plans to go to lunch with an old friend that I hadn't seen in a long time. So I thought, oh, they're just gonna throw blood up or something. And then whatever goes up, it's only gonna last 30 seconds. So. Off to lunch I go. I didn't pick up the phone until one, and when I did, <laughs> I'll be damned. Ah, I missed barbecue and breaker with the ram on Hasbro Pulse. Hasbro, why do you hate me? But then a glimmer of hope, because I saw people posting that they were both available on the Target site. So I rushed over there thinking, oh, I'm about to miss them. I got to get them in the cart real fast. And they ended up staying in stock, or at least pre-orderable, 
for the rest of the evening. Breaker did sell out later Thursday, but barbecue is still up for pre-order last time I looked. On top of that, if you tried to order more than one, even if it's a second order, Target would automatically cancel that order. So maybe that's a factor too of why it's still up. Between this and Major Blood, who honestly, I've seen more Major Bloods at Target on the pegs than any other G.I. Joe classified figure at retail anywhere. It does seem things are getting a little bit brighter. I do have this nagging, gnawing voice at the bottom of my brainstem going, Target's gonna cancel your pre-order. But I'm pushing that down. I'm hoping for the best. When it comes to release time, they're just gonna ship it and I'll have my toys. Done deal. Happiness prevails. Uh... I'm ever the optimist much to the annoyance of some of you. I'm not saying we're out of the woods, but the trail just got a hell of a lot wider and we can kind of see the open field out in the distance. It's, it's way out there, but there's hope. Then there's Hasbro's Star Wars Black series. This week we saw a lot of reveals, a lot of reissue, a lot of repackage. Monday brought us the GameStop exclusive Zalbar from Knights of the Old Republic. I've never played that game, but... I see a cool looking Wookiee warrior. It does have an altered head, even though it's kind of hard to tell the straps around the bow caster and then the vibro blade. Is it just me or is that vibro blade fairly, you know, large? The loose shots seem a bit plain on the fur paint, but the package shots shows a lighter shade for the nose, the mouth, the front of the torso. I'm hoping it looks more like that. Then Thursday, From Forlom to Zuckus revealed the Lucasfilm 50th Anniversary Power of the Force 2 Retro Wave. Essentially, it's just reissues of A New Hope Han and Luke with photo reel and nostalgia packaging. Oh, and Greedo, just along for the ride. Although, for some reason, the colors look better here than the original release. I don't know if they updated them or not, but I like the look of it. Getting these out for new collectors is not a bad thing because they are older at this point, but I don't feel like that photo reel is doing Han any favors and that tunic on Luke, ooh, it needs to be put away. But I will admit Power of the Force 2 was my gateway back into toy collecting as an adult. So I, I'm probably gonna end up with Greedo to keep on card to put up on the wall. The Retro Wave is exclusive to Hasbro Pulse and the Disney Store. For other exclusives, the 212th Battalion Clone Trooper will be popping up, or at least I'm hoping it pops up at Walgreens. As I record this, no links have popped up on the Walgreens store. This may be a run pharmacy to pharmacy looking for an action figure. But I need to give Cody some backup and I like that new clone body. So them using that here, eh, I'm interested. I will be going to Walgreens. Then over at Walmart, oh, Walmart, there is the Bad Batch Rex with Poncho, which is just the Rex we already have with new neck gear, missing the pauldron, and uh, updated helmet. It's got the binoculars on top, and then the weld lines are bluer, they say, in the solicitation. Oh, and the Poncho. <laughs> I can't forget about that, right? I do not like the look of this. I don't know. I, I'm pretty happy with the Rex I already have. But the missing pauldron is accurate if you have the poncho on him. In the show, the cloth was just draping over his shoulders normally. But I don't know if the helmet is coming from concept art or something because, at least in the episode we've seen with Rex, I haven't watched the newest episode, it doesn't have that attachment on top. So, I don't know. The other Walmart exclusive, though, is Crosshair in his Imperial armor. This does have a new helmet that goes over the head and then a new chest piece and the belt has been modified not to have his strap going over the top but the shoulder pads are inaccurate which throws me off because that's a big shoulder pad still i dig this look again i haven't seen today's episode i don't know what happens but i i like this even better the walmart site when they went up they both sold out really fast crosshairs came back up and has been easy to order for the past hour or so rex popped up I, I haven't seen them come back. For some reason, they listed Rex at $30 and Crosshair at $26, uh, which is normal exclusive price. Why is Rex $30? Is it because of the little design work on the cloth or is it simply because he's Rex? That's kind of bullshit because it's not deluxe. It's not bigger packaging. All it is is the same figure. Updated helmet, cloth poncho. So it doesn't break my heart that it's already sold out. I don't need it. And you guys know me, bread and butter, bread and butter. I'm happy with the Rex I already have. And that's it for this week, except it's not. <laughs> I know there's already stuff up. Boss Fight McFarlane's probably topping away right now, but 
We'll talk about that next week. Monday Foosh Live, the next Foosh Weekly. If you're interested in seeing any of the pictures up close without me all, he's large. I'll be posting all of that along with links to more information, pre-orders on the Foosh front page Saturday at noon. And I don't have any kind of deep rant today. Nothing to get off my chest. Just that this makes me giggle. Look at the eyebrows and the pupils. It's hilarious. Craft foam, blue tack. But I feel like we need an upgrade kit for Modoc in the future because yeah! If you enjoyed this Foosh Weekly, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on Foosh. And I don't know what it is about today. I know what it is. Damn it. I forgot to take my allergy pill. I'm all kind of... and So if you think I was crying earlier when I choked myself up and nearly died, or, you know, I, I feel a little off, why didn't I do that? I'm getting old. I'm forgetting stuff I do every day. Oh, but I hit record. Cool.